Hi, my name is Grant Rodiak. I am the designer of Solstice. This is meant to be a rules instruction video for the game so that if you don't want to read the rules, you can watch this instead and learn how to play. Solstice is a drafting game for two to four players that takes about 30 minutes to play. For this video, I'm going to use tokens that I've provided that are available for people who get the deluxe version of the game. If you do not have these tokens, you'll just need to create some substitute tokens or simply use a pen and paper. But for the video, I'm going to use the token, so if you're confused why those tokens exist and you didn't get the deluxe version, that's why. Just use a pen and paper or alternative tokens. Let's go to setup. Before the game starts, it's good to get an idea of what the components are. So there are four cards that walk over the rules, but you should either watch this video or go to my website and download the full written rules. Those are meant basically as a primer or a refresher. There are 12 casualty tokens, deception events, fortune events, destruction events. There are four sets of player cards with a reference, diplomat, duchess, elder, planet marshal, legions, and assassin. There are five planets that are double-sided, so once you learn the game, you can play with just the art version. There are six art-only cards that are just there for funsies. You can completely just set those aside. Then you have a first player token. Uh, right now, as of now, it is hilariously small. It's going to get bigger. Um, a fortune and a or a, a favorite and a strength token and then points tokens so those are all the components now let's get them set up for this tutorial we're going to play just a three-player game so firstly you give every player a reference card which they just place in front of themselves you create a supply for the casualty and point tokens you then randomly choose one planet planet per player and place them top to bottom so three players three planets if you're playing with four you have four planets with two, you play with just two random planets, and then in the third slot, you put the desert, and you only use the desert in two-player as is marked on the card, but here we're playing with three, so we don't use the desert. All those player cards, remember there are six of each, you randomly get all six per player, you stack them up, and then finally, we need to get our events. You randomly choose two fortunes, two deceptions, and four destruction events. Now. In a two-player game, you just choose one, one, and then there's two destruction events that specifically say two-player. Once you're experienced, you can mix and match however you want, but at the start, that's what we recommend. And then you take all your events, and you're going to mix them with the player cards. I'm not going to do this here to save video time, but effectively, then you shuffle them, and you deal six to every player. So let's skip ahead to that point. So now we're in the first phase, which is the draft phase. All the phases of play are listed on your reference card. So here, this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to choose one card in my hand. I'm the green player. So let's go ahead and choose that Legions. And of course, I'm not going to draft it face up. I'm going to draft it and put it face down in front of me. And I'm going to pass my remaining cards to the left. Now, every round of play, this alternates. And you can actually use the first player token for this. We're going to pass to the left. But then next round, we would pass to the right. So we're going to keep doing this. Drafting cards until we all have five cards. Once that's done, uh, typically there will be one card remaining per player, because remember we dealt out six and everybody's going to draft five. So what you do at that point is you randomize those last three cards and you place one each face up on each of these planets. Uh, those cards will start there and that sort of gets things moving. Now in the weird case that you have uh, not enough cards, you simply draft from the top of the deck. So we're gonna go ahead and skip forward to the draft phase being complete, and we're in the next phase. Now that the draft phase is concluded, we are in the dispatch cards phase. As you can see here, these are the three cards that weren't drafted. So we have a black elder on the water planet, we have a green elder on the capital, and we have down here a blue legions on the jungle planet. So all of us have a hand of five cards, and this is a mixture of cards that don't belong to us. So here I have Blue's Elder and Blue's Assassin, but then I also have the Green Legions, and then I have a couple events. On your turn, starting with the first player and then proceeding clockwise, or the same order of the draft, you're going to take one card and play it face down and then disclose some information. And you're going to disclose information based on what the planet tells you. So the water word tells you to disclose either the type or the faction. The type is always at the bottom of the card. So here, if I were playing this one, I would play it face down, and I would say this is an elder, or 
This is a black card and you can see the color always in the background. If it's an event, you always say event. Now, the capital is worth more, three as you can see here, so here you must disclose the card type. So here I would have to say elder. But again, you don't know whose it is. And then finally, for cards here played face down, you disclose nothing. You don't say anything, except events have to be played face up here. So events are revealed, but everything else is played face down. So let's say, for example, I was wanting to tuck this assassin I would take this card and maybe I want to scare others away from using this. because I don't want people to place this here. So I'll play this assassin face down here. You don't know what it is and I have to disclose the type. So looking at the bottom of that card, I'll say, this is an assassin. And now based on what you drafted and what you think happened, you're not quite sure what happened. Now, we keep doing this until everyone has no cards left in hand. There's a few things you need to know. One, each planet can have a maximum of six cards on it. And that includes the ones that start there. So basically, this has two right now and it can only have four more. Once it has all six cards, no more can be played there. The other thing is that once per round, players may take one card from their hand. And so in this case, I'm gonna use the blue elder and you could tuck it underneath your reference card. That is taking a prisoner. And I'll tell you what that means in a minute, but it effectively takes a card and removes it from circulation if you're not sure where to play it or you wanna save it for next round. So we're going to fast forward now to pretending that we've played all the cards, and then I'll show you the resolve planets phase. Before I resolve these, just to give you a look, this is what things might look like at the end of the dispatch phase. One thing to note if you're wondering why these are face up, this deception event instructs the player to play it face up and you immediately reveal one dispatched card. They wanted to find out whose assassin this was. They knew it was an assassin, but they didn't know whose. They did that, so now we all know it was blue, and they score one victory point for doing that, which I've awarded them. Okay, let's go ahead and resolve this now. When you resolve a planet, you do them from top to bottom, one at a time. On each planet, you reveal all the cards that they're face up, and then arrange them from left to right in initiative order, with lowest initiative, here being a zero, to highest initiative, with the elder being a 13. You then resolve them in lowest to highest. All cards have strength on the top next to the blade, and favor next to the hand. Events typically don't have strength and favor, but sometimes they do. And again, you know whose card they are by looking in the background. That's the Black Legions, the back, uh, the Black Planet Assass, uh, Planet Marshal, and the Black Elder. So here we do the zero first. This has the key term sacrifice. Sacrifice is a reaction when an assassin tries to kill a duchess. You could sacrifice your legions using your military strength to have them die instead to save the life of the Duchess. So we skip over him. Then we go to 10. Do not resolve any more cards on this planet. Oh man, this really stinks. What happens here is Black was clearly piling cards onto here. One of the other players said, well, maybe I can stop him somewhat. So they played this, which means that this 12 and this 13 won't resolve. Uh-oh, that really stinks. Let's move on to the next planet. These don't resolve, no points are scored. This next planet is a real mess. So remember, we revealed the assassin, so this doesn't do anything else now, because it's already resolved. We then get to the assassin, which is one of the most powerful and interesting cards in the game. It says, kill one enemy duchess, aka a non-blue duchess. Strength wins ties, score one B VP if successful. Well, here's an enemy duchess, so he's gonna go ahead and kill her. So we remove that, and then the green player takes one of these casualty tokens. He scores one victory point for doing that, and uh, that's pretty much how that resolves. Now, and then we'll go ahead and discard her. She's not here anymore. Now, let's say that there were multiple assassins. That strength wins ties. What that means is if blue overall between all their cards has more strength than the color of the other assassin, they would get to go first and then the other one. If they're ever tied, you have to be strongest. Um, nothing proceeds. So remember, she's dead. We're going to skip her. Then we get here to the elder. It says strongest. Score one victory point. Well... It's one strength versus one, so they tie. However, favored, score one victory point. He has one favor versus zero favor, so he's actually gonna score one victory point for that. Now let's pretend, just for the sake of discussion, that the Duchess wasn't killed, and we'll pretend this is something else. Here, he would have qualified for strongest because he would have had two versus one, so then he would have earned two points. Here's another negative event that you have to watch out for. Favored, whomever has the most favor, 
loses two victory points if able, or as much as they can. Well, again, remember he just earned those points? He would lose those. And then strongest, they claim poison. Claim means that you put the card in front of you, and then next round, you follow its instructions. And it says next round, you draft one fewer card. Fortunately, remember she's dead, they tie out its strongest, so nothing would actually happen there. So this is one of the key elements of the game, is that when it says strongest, you can bear strength of all the cards of your color, regardless of where they are in the initiative line. And if you have the most, you do what it says. If you don't have the most, you don't do what it says. And that includes if you tie. Now, really quickly, because she's here, let's again pretend this assassin didn't kill her. Go over there, assassin. So the Duchess, she resolves at nine, says score planet. Score planet means you score the victory points shown in the top left corner. So this would be three victory points. Favor wins ties. So remember how with the assassin, strength wins ties? Here, it's favor for the duchess. So if you have two duchesses, whomever has the most favor across all their color of all their cards, they get to go first and only one duchess can score. Now, as an added bonus, if they're also favored, they also score two victory points. So if she were not assassinated, she would get three points for the capital. Remember, that's there. And then she would get two more points for being favored. So the duchess is very powerful. That's a lot of points. Um, but there's a chance that she could die. Let's go to this third planet now. Now, on this last planet, we really have a slugfest between blue and green here. This is a good place to use the favored and strongest tokens, just because it'll be easy to reference things going down the line. So if we do strength first, we have three four, five strength versus one, two, so five versus two, so blue is clearly strongest. And then if we do favor, we have one, two, three versus one, two, three, four, green is favored. So now we can just reference those as we go throughout. We know at zero that these are both sacrifice, those are reactions, they would have been useful over here against that assassin. So here we have favored, score three VP. We know that green is favored, so they would get three victory points, and because blue is not favored, Remember, they're not. They would not score their points. Then you get to the planet marshal. It says strongest, score three victory points. Well, again, we know that blue is strongest, so they would get three. So they sort of netted out here, um, but green only had to invest two cards to do this. So that's roughly how points work and how cards work. Read the cards, read the examples and the full rules. They'll guide you through this. But effectively, you're trying to see who's the strongest, and you do what it says, who's favored, and do what it says, or in some cases, you do other things things. So at the end of this phase, once you've resolved all the plants, you gather all the cards. You're going to discard these. You're going to shuffle them and put them on the bottom of what's on the deck. What this means is that the cards that didn't come out last round will now be at the top of the deck and the cards that didn't did come out will be at the bottom. Just before cleanup, you check to see if the game is over. The game is over if one player has three or more casualties due to assassins, you get a casualty when your character dies, or if one or more characters have 16 or more victory points, at which point the game is over in either of these cases. Right now the game isn't over, so let's proceed to clean up. So remember last round, I got this poison, which means I draft one fewer card, so that'll be in the draft phase. But now we need to give every player six more cards so that we can start the next round. If you had a prisoner, you pull that out now, and this is actually the first card in your hand. We all took a prisoner. So that means we're only gonna be dealt five new cards each. And you're gonna do this until every player has six cards. Once that's done, whomever has the most points becomes the new first player. You rotate the order of play, and then you keep going. A typical game lasts three rounds, sometimes going as long as five, and sometimes being as short as two. You want to be careful to not let somebody stack up and just run away with all the points. That's basically how to play. I really encourage you to read the rules to sort of see how the cards work out and such, but basically it's, it's actually a pretty simple game on the surface. What makes Solstice challenging for new folks to learn is that first you have to draft cards, then you have to use the cards wisely, and you have to pick up limited information based on what you learned in the draft, what you saw, what you passed, what you kept. You have to try to figure out where your cards are being played, and then once you play them and resolve them, you start to see 
whether your strategy panned out. There's a lot of really simple, tiny ways that the cards connect with each other. And sometimes it takes a couple plays to sort of figure that out. Um, usually by the end of the third round of the first game, people go, oh, I get it now. Um, but it's a very player-driven game. Um, you will be counter-drafted. And some people will be frustrated and say, I didn't get any of my cards in the draft. But your cards have to be played. So what that means is, is it's not about you playing your cards, it's about finding out where your cards are. And remember, even though everyone can coordinate and counter draft you if you're doing well, it is very difficult for them to coordinate and play the cards together. So you may find that if you're smart and you use the deception cards to get some information, use the fortune cards to bolster yourself and protect yourself, use the destruction events to sort of hinder your opponents, that you'll come out ahead. So it's really, it's about drafting those cards to build a nice little strategy, playing them together and reacting to your opponents to sort of hinder them, and then hoping and seeing that your plans came to fruition. There's a full rule set, there's a strategy guide, and there are these online rules. If you ever have any questions, you can of course ask me, but thanks for checking out the Rules to Solstice, and I hope you were able to give it a chance. Thanks.